Jesus. So come forth with power. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you, Minister Chastity, for setting me up. Thank you for everyone being here. You know, he said, where two or three are gathered, I will be in the midst. And when he said, two or three of us, I said to Auntie Mary, I said, if it's just me, you, and Nana, I'm still going to. He said, go ahead, still teach. Because. God's word will not return unto him void. Amen? Amen. It will accomplish and achieve everything that he's called it forth to do. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We glorify you on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. May we open our hearts to you that you would speak clearly to our spirit. That we live our lives righteously, not through the carnal man, but we live and walk and talk and breathe according to your word in the spirit. Give us the victory. It is already ours, Father, in the name of Jesus. Speak to us, teach us, walk with us, talk with us. We surrender and submit. All. And every attack that is sent from hell is bound and arrested through the power of the Holy Ghost and sent back to the abyss. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to continue uh, as we did <clears throat> last class session, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. So let's go there, Hebrews chapter 11. And the reason why I was led by the Holy Spirit to finalize as you know this is our last class and we have two more classes left to finalize and conclude the class with Ephesians chapter 11 is because with all the teaching throughout this year we wanted to hone in and look at examples of men and women that exemplify righteous living and through their example and their faith that the Lord can speak and teach us and how we should live our lives. Amen? Amen. So Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> now last uh, class session I finished off with I believe verse, verse, verse 11. And I, I believe as I was teaching last class and the Holy Spirit just laid it on me and I audibly uh, spoke it out about getting uh, red stones that would simplify rubies. And he wanted me to, uh, that uh, you would come up and, and get a stone, and a stone would represent this is a righteous living ruby. And every time you would look at this stone, it would remind you of Hebrews 11. And that every verse, there is a righteous living ruby, we could say also known as a, a nugget, in how one should live their life righteously. Amen? Amen. So as we go throughout these verses, and as the Holy Spirit leads, I would encourage you, and I'll, I'll give you the signal, that you come up <clears throat> and you take a, uh, a red stone. I'd like to uh, just acknowledge uh, my brother in Christ, um, Anthony Brown, for this wonderful uh, display of uh, the petals and the stones. And I just asked him to uh, just do what, what is due. And, uh, he, he, he went above and beyond, but God gets the glory. Amen? Amen. Okay. <clears throat> let's start with, let's go back to uh, verse 11, okay? <clears throat> of Hebrews. 
It was by, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise. Okay, the last righteous living nugget that I gave was righteous living, righteous living Ruby, righteous living makes the physically, if you're taking notes, and genetically impossible possible in and only through God. Reference scripture, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. And it reads, for nothing is impossible with God. Now, the same verse, we have another righteous living ruby. Number two, righteous living always births the seed for your miracle. Okay? She couldn't bear any children. Physically, she couldn't bear any children because of her age. Her age. Her age wouldn't allow her to. But God. Righteous living number three for the same verse. Righteous living movie number three. Righteous living is life and multiplication to any dead situation. Now let me backtrack here. That righteous living ruby number two. Can you read that a uh, uh, chastity that I just gave? <coughs> um, the last one. No, the second one. Always birth. Always birth the seed for your miracle. Okay. My reference scripture for that is First John, chapter three, verse nine. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. Now, reference scripture for number three, righteous living is life to any and multiplication to any dead situation, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel chapter 37 was verse 1 to 10 was when the Lord had Ezekiel prophesy and command into the valley of the dry bones. Okay, you can go and read that for yourself. Okay, now we're going to move on. We're going to cover, we're going to start with verse 12, all right? Now, let's see here. Verse 12. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. What can come, from, what can come forth from that which is classified and dead? How is it physically possible? According to the law of physics and chemistry in the earth realm, how can anything come out of anything that is completely, scientifically, has already declared dead? Abraham and, and Sarah weren't able, weren't, were, it's not that they weren't able, they just didn't, at, up in age, he didn't have an heir and didn't have, didn't have a, a child at that time. Now the word of God says, a whole nation. How can a whole nation come from something that's considered dead? And not only a whole nation, but the Bible uses examples. Stars, as many as the stars of the sky, and the sand which is by the seashore. You guys ready? Righteous living ruby. Write this down. 
unless you die to self and sin, you cannot produce a harvest. Unless you die to self and sin, you cannot produce a harvest. Abraham died to himself and sin, and as a result, birthed nations. Okay? I'm going to repeat again. Abraham died to himself in sin, and sin, uh, and as a result, birthed nations. All right. Do you or do you not, as a child of the living God, during this end time, do you want to birth your purpose and your destiny here on the earth realm, which may or may not include nations. Every one of us isn't called to the four corners of the globe, but we are called to somebody. Yeah. Okay? We, God don't send in everybody to north, south, east, and west. Some of us might just cover just the east, the eastern part of the globe, maybe the eastern part of the United States of America, Maybe the eastern part of China. Maybe the eastern part only of Bellflower. John chapter 12, verse 24 to 26. Let's go there. I want you guys to follow with me. This is a very, very critical scripture. Unless you die to yourself and you die to sin, you cannot produce a harvest. He died to himself and sin, and as a result, he birthed nations. John chapter 12, verse 24 to 26. Can you read? Are you guys there? Yes. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new life. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to be my disciple must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Okay? Now let's go to Genesis chapter 12. I want to give you guys a background. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. How did Abraham die to himself? How did he die to himself? How can you die and yet out of your death birth something? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord had said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who treat you with contempt, all the families on earth will be blessed through you. So here the Lord gives the instruction, leave. Mama, daddy, Uncle Pookie and them, leave all of them and go. Verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. See, this is why it's really important when God gives us a specific Targeted instruction, we go, we do, we say. The Bible doesn't say that Abraham took some time out and said, wait a minute, Lord, let's have a conference about this. The Lord said, leave, verse 3 said, and he departed. As the Lord instructed and Lot went with him, Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran and headed for the land of Canaan when they arrived in Canaan. Mark chapter 10. Anthony, could you please turn the air on? Yeah. Good job. Mark chapter 10. Verse 29 and 30. Yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news 
will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. Now, go there, just one book over, Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 25. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 25. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but are yourself lost or destroyed? If Abraham did not leave God, did not leave country, family, bloodline, and blood ties, and obey God, where would we be today? Where would we be today? Even Sometimes it takes a lot out of us to step out of comfort, to step out of familiarity. You will not know until you step out. But be, 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 be full aware that before you get ready to step out, you got to die for yourself. You gotta die to everything that's familiar to you. You gotta die to everything that's common to you. You gotta die to everything that's um, <clears throat> comfortable to you. All right. And more importantly, you have to die to sin. Yes. Because he obeyed God and left everything he knew up until that point. Even though he traveled with God and walked with God and talked with God and the years added on and here came and the promise was given, you will have an heir. Yet he believed, yet he kept walking with God. Yet he believed, yet, yet he kept walking with God. Here comes year 15. The promise still hasn't been fulfilled. I still believe you. I still walk with you. I still trust you. To the point where, Lord, genetically and physically, I am unable to... I am unable to sow a seed to impregnate my wife. Family jewels is dried up. Dysfunctional, it doesn't work. Until we get to that point where we say, Lord, I trust you regardless. I'm willing to die to self and allow you to birth me. He birthed nations, plural, just not one nation, amen? Verse 13. All these people died, still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. This is what the, the, the text is referring to. All of the men and women in the world prior to Christ, throughout the centuries, the word was consistent. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah. I will send for the Messiah. I will send for the Messiah. The prophecy, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Messiah. They knew Jesus was coming. Yet they didn't live long enough to see the fulfillment for themselves of the promised Messiah. However, Write this down. Righteous living Ruby. Okay, based on verse 13. Believe in every promise that God has given you. Even if you never get to see that promise fulfilled in your lifetime, let it build your eyes of faith. Let me say that again. Righteous living believes in every promise that God has given you. Even if you never get to see that promise for 
fulfilled in your lifetime. Let it build your eyes of faith.
both of those gates to be just the way I know people want to say it, the way he gates, okay? By the way, if you guys need my notes, just trust me, I'll be so willing to make copies. This is all from Holy Spirit. I'm gonna say that again. Righteous living is God's word, is your only promise, and your only promise is God's word. This is your bread and butter. In the distant future or the current present. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But Jesus told him, no, the scripture says, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I'm still on verse 13. Next nugget. Righteous living, nugget three for verse 13. Righteous living, do not waver in your faith. Because his word is his promise. And you are assured because of it. You are living righteously before God. God's word is his promise to you. And his promise to you should reassure you always for time and eternity. Lord, if you said it, I believe it. Amen. There's a promise I've been waiting for God to fulfill for almost 20 years now, and I'm still waiting. And you know what's helping me hang in there and wait because don't think many a time I brought it before the Lord and I said, are you sure you said this? Because I'm, I'm, I'm second guessing you. And I was bold enough one time to challenge the Lord and I told the Lord, uh, I said, if you don't fulfill the promise that you said to me 20 years ago, I'll be the first person that you ever lied to. I challenged God. And I said, but your word said you don't lie. So prove me wrong. Prove me wrong that the promise you gave to me 20 years ago, you won't fulfill it. Pray for me. Amen. Here's my reference scripture. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. I encourage you guys to memorize this. Memorize it and meditate it. And no matter what you face in this life, and the promises that you are waiting on God to fulfill, and the enemy comes to attack your mind and sow a seed of confusion and doubt, and have you second guess your God, let this verse resurrect and arise. And let this verse be your comfort. God is not a man that he should nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? He told Abraham, you will have an heir. Ten years later, I'm still waiting, Lord. Twenty years later, I'm still waiting. The promise is, the Lord said, if I said it, it's going to happen. <laughs> when? Who knows? But I said it, and it's going to happen. You, with your eyes on faith, keep it focused on me. Amen? Amen. Next, righteous living ruby. I'm still on verse 13, you know. Here's the thing. You know, I honestly try for every verse just to have one ruby like one righteous living ruby. And for those of you who have you just came in, guess what? We got our ruby. We got our red stone. You guys are gonna come up and take, take, okay? Okay. Number four, verse 13. Write this down. Righteous living in the distant future or the current present cleaves and cleans me to God's promise. Righteous 
living in the distant future or current present cleaves and clings me to God's promise. I believe what he said. He will do, therefore, I embrace it for as long as I live. Whether I get to see it fulfilled or not, guess what? I still believe God. I repeat that again. Righteous living in the distant future or current present cleaves or clings me to God's promise. I believe what he said he will do. Therefore, I embrace it for as long as I live, whether I get to see it fulfilled or not, guess what? I still believe God. Galatians chapter 4. Excuse me, Galatians chapter 3. Verse 8 and 9. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God will declare the Gentiles to be righteous because of their faith. God proclaimed his good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. Okay? And verse 14. Scroll to the same chapter, verse 14. Through, Jesus, through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Now we're still on verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. Let, let's read verse 13 again, okay? All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. This is the last righteous living movie for verse 13. Righteous living, we are sojourners passing through. S-O-J-O-U-R-N-E-R-S. We are sojourners passing through. Reference scripture. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 15. We are here for only a moment. Visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. This is not our home. This is not our home. This is not our place of citizenship or residency, permanent residency or permanent citizenship, no matter what piece of fertile or unfertile ground your mother birthed you on. We're only passing through here. Hmm? Now, those of us, here's the thing, who live righteously understand that we're passing through. The unrighteous and the wicked, they don't know that. Maybe some of them have heard, they've been told, and some of them, they refuse to believe that, no, this is my home. This is my country, my nation. I would rather die the red, white, and blue, purple, green, and gold. But we know this is not home. Just temporary. Amen? Amen? Verse 14 of Hebrews 11. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. All right. We're just blending right into that. Righteous Living Ruby for verse 14. Write it down. Our country, <coughs> land of birth, place of residence or where we die is not our home. Our home is not physical. It is not geographical. It is 
spiritual. Earth is not our home. John chapter 14. Do you guys want me to repeat that? John chapter 14, verse 2 to 4. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. Amen? Amen. Let's go to verse... Verse 15, I'm sorry. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. Verse 16, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Righteous living. Verse 15 and verse 16. Our better place and our home is heaven. The reassurance and promise has been given and said. He has prepared a city for us. Okay? If you don't live righteously here on earth and walk with God the way he has dictated us to walk, heaven is not your home. You won't end up there. John chapter 14, verse 3. I just read that. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Okay? Now, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. Verse 10. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone like the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper as clear as crystal. Verse 12, the city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. Verse 13, there were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had 12 foundation stones, and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And then you can read on on your own time, verse 18 to verse 27. Even though the promise was given to the nation of Israel, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and his descendants about the promise of the prophesied Messiah, and Christ came to fulfill that promise, they still knew, even from then, we're passing through here too. We may never get to see Jesus the Christ, but we believe he is the promise that we are seeking for. And through him, we will be where he's at. So Christ came. And those who are fortunate to be alive during his time, they got to see him. And they believe. And here we have post-Christ, which is us. And the promise still applies. We haven't seen him. But we believe he is the promise. Yes, yes. And after we live this life and leave from here, the same faith that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had, we too stand on that same faith. Yes. We will go home. We will see Jesus. Because we believe. We have the same faith they have. They, they, they were hoping oh, we, we, we want to see the promised Messiah. They 
the demagogues to see that. But they believed. Their faith was steadfast and steadfast and firm. Rome, you have seen proof now. There's a better place for us because of the promise. Amen? Amen. Verse 17 of Hebrews. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Now, righteous living Ruby, you will be tested by God Amen. to give up the thing, person, or place that is dear to your heart. Continue to live righteously before God. And don't think God will not test you. And don't think God will not try you. Righteous living, you will be tested by God to give up that thing, that person, that place that is dear to your heart. And the perfect example was exhibited. John chapter 3, 16. He gave up the one person that was dear to his heart was his son. And the Lord God Almighty gave up Jesus willingly for you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. not a, a mother yet to be able to conceive to carry a baby to full term and to birth and to raise a child. Most of you, not all of you, have uh, experienced that. I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine what it would take for a mother to give up their child. It's one thing, and maybe it's the same when you, when you examine the whole uh, psychological packet that comes with giving away your child for adoption. But what about giving your child for death to save another? God did it. Luke chapter 22. about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. me, excuse me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Next righteous living Ruby for verse 17. Actually, let's go to verse 18. I'm sorry, I'm done with that. Verse 18. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Righteous living Ruby nugget for verse 18. Out of complete submission, obey God. Don't question, don't fight, don't second guess. Obey even at the cost of life of another. Out of complete submission, obey God. Don't question, don't fight, don't second guess. Do it, even at the cost of life of another. Okay? Next, next ruby, righteous living ruby. At the moment of your testing,
And what may seem as God's word as contradiction, obey anyway. Do it anyhow. At your moment of testing and what may seem as God's word as a contradiction, obey anyway and do it anyhow. First Samuel chapter 15. Verse 22. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Okay? John chapter 15, verse 14. John chapter 15, verse 14. You are my friends if you do what I command. The Lord said, give me your son. Sacrifice him to me. Did Abraham know he was going to raise him back again even if Abraham took his life? Don't second guess God. He will test you to the point. He will go against everything that you actually believe. Go against your belief system. Go against your culture. Go against tradition. Go against everything that has shaped you and formed you into the woman or man that you have become up until that point. And here comes God. Do you or do you not trust me? Will you or will you not obey? You are living righteously before me. Now here I come and stand before you. Give up your child to me. Take your child's life. And here you're going to be like, wait, what? What? Wait, what? What is that? Commit murder? Because clearly when I look at the Ten Commandments, that's one of them. You said thou shalt not kill. Because I'm standing here just... You know, we, we, we start we start we start trying to find a justification and we start trying to trying to find um, answers to, to make sense of the situation. And then that's why I said it seems like a contradiction, right? You said don't murder, and yet you're asking me to take the life of my child. But even if it seems that way to you, you still obey anyhow. You are being tested. God really wants to put you to the test. You really say you're living righteously before me? You really have made a commitment in your heart that you will live right before me in public and private all the days of your life. Okay? Prove it. Let me try and test you and see you for real or not. Verse 19. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Number 19. Righteous Righteous living. Believe God will honor his word. Even if you feel he doesn't. He's still capable and able to do it. Righteous living. Ruby. Believe God will honor his word. Even if you think he doesn't. He's still capable and able to do it. Go with me to Daniel. These are my favorite. I hold them very dear to my heart. The three Hebrew boys. I pray. 
pray and I asked the Lord, I said, give me an opportunity to meet them. Let them come to me. I would love to meet them. <gasps> meet them in the prophet Daniel. I will give you verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15. I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instrument. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. Verse, verse 18. But even if he doesn't, okay. wow. That's right. That's it. Hmm? That's it right? we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Whether God fulfills his promise to you or not, he's still able. Still able. Yeah. Come on. Still able. Not only is he still able, he's still capable. a God like none of There's not enough words in the English language. I kid you guys not. Not enough nouns, adverbs, verbs, you name it, to describe the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we serve. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish indefinitely more than we might ask or think. Next righteous living will be for verse 19. Whether God does it or not, whether I see the promise fulfilled or not, one thing I know and stand on, my own life and belief. I choose not to compromise in my faith to God. To the end, I still will believe. They didn't compromise. They did not compromise. The three Hebrew boys did not compromise. They knew God could save them. They knew God will save them. But they just wanted to put balance in their little whether he save us or not, we still know he's able. We still know he'll deliver us because we know even if we die physically, we know where we're going. Hmm? Whether God does it or not, whether I see the promise fulfilled or not, one thing I know and stand on, my own life and belief, I choose not to compromise in my faith to God. To the end, I still will believe. Verse 20. And I'm going to close out. Two more verses. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons Jacob and Esau. Verse 20. Righteous living. <coughs> Righteous living always commands. Write this down. A continued blessing of promise. It's a promised blessing of a legacy that is to be continued throughout the generation. You want to leave a legacy for the lifestyle that you're living now of righteous living for the next generation. Do what God asks you to do. Obey what he says to obey yeah. in his word. Don't do. If he says don't do it, we don't do it. If he says do it, do it. Continue. Let that lifestyle, let that anointing, let that mental of righteous living that you are living today, when your time is up, be continued and transferred over to your seed and your seed seed. I use a perfect example. My great grandfather on my mother's side, father's father's father, was uh, would daily would be summoned.
going to the palace back in home in, in, in Sana, and he would go and pray with the king. As a result of that, and he, he raised his children, his seed, and his, his sons went into ministry. Their sons' sons went into ministry. And I am about fifth, sixth generation. You see what I'm saying? The seed that our ancestors sowed, whether it was wicked or good, the descendants pay the price. Unless they repented when they were in their sin, then there's a shift. Then God can take that which the enemy meant for evil and turn it around in that family, in that lineage, in that bloodline for good. I'm a perfect example. My father comes from descendants of cannibals. The kind that will rip your heart out, literally. And you're sitting there, trembling, and here come great, great, great grandfather, rip the heart out, take a chunk out, and look at the enemy and laugh. Enter Christianity. My great grandmother was a God fearing woman, I come to find out. Fijian. God fearing woman. She embraced Jesus. And when she married my, my Scottish, Irish, American great great grandfather, she made sure that her children knew Jesus and knew the Bible. We all on that side of the family, we're not saying this word, 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 but 99.9% unsaved. But one thing is sure, this is the example I'm saying, even through one woman's conversion, my bloodline on my father's side still got altered. My grandfather, my father's, uh, uh, father's brother became a man of God. My father is a man of God. My brother who lives in England has now decided to step in and accept a call for ministry. You guys see what I'm saying? Even with that, God gave a promise that supersedes color line, supersedes culture, tradition, bloodline. If you believe, I come in and I shift and transform your DNA for generations to come. Acts, when you have a time, reference scripture for verse 20. Read Acts chapter 7. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Every generation is blessed. The blessing has been transferred down from one to the next without hindrance. Okay? We break the curse. I shared with my father, I said, uh, I said, Dad, um, I said, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't, I said, you know, we, we were praying and, and, and I said, Dad, what about, you know, with knowing our bloodline and, and knowing what our ancestors did and they were into very heavy witchcraft and ancestral worship cannibalism and all of these things. I said, what about, um, you know, because my father got approached a long time ago to uh, become a Freemason and he turned it down, but he was in the world. And I said, Dad, what about that? And he said, you know, who knows what our ancestors got into? But the prayer is for you and I, he said, we're going to pray and ask God to cut all of that whether we knew what they dabbed into or not, but everything that was wicked, everything that brought on a generational curse, the blood of Jesus cuts and ended with me. The evil not God, if God allows me to have children, it won't go on to my children. Yeah. How we live our life today will determine the blessing on the curse, all the curses of our descendants to us. Righteous living 
for the end time movement is so critical to us within the body of Christ that our children's children's children if we don't live long enough to see antichrist, tribulation, everything that's been prophesied in Revelation, at least one thing you know, through the eyes of faith, you trust and believe God. God, if you did it for the nation of Israel, you do it for me. If I never live long enough to see my grandchildren, great-grandchildren be saved and walk this promise, that's okay. I trust and believe you because I've done my part and sow the seed of righteous living in you so that they could see Nana was my example. Auntie showed me the way. Uncle did his best to teach me and raise me. Amen? Verse 21. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. So we see the pattern. Abraham, who beget Isaac, who beget Jacob, and Jacob beget the 12 tribes of Israel, and now the focus is on the son, Joseph. Verse 21, Righteous Living Ruby. Righteous Living Ruby releases the blessings from one generation oh. unto the next. Including the current and present time. Righteous living releases the blessings from one generation unto the next. Including the current and present time. Genesis chapter 17, verse 6. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations, and kings will be among them. This is what it's saying. It's saying, my seed and their seed and their seed, seed, etc. Descendants in and through my bloodline is blessed. See, when you live righteously, it's just not always, it's just not about you in this present time. It's affecting affecting your brother's, what is it, son, daughter, son, her grandson. Leaves affecting your brother's children. You don't have children. Barbara's affecting your family in Arkansas. Brenda, your grandchildren. Joanne, your grandchildren. Deborah, your son. Dominique, your family. Anthony, your brother, your parents. John, David, Thank God that Nana said yes to my grandfather. Mm -hmm. This is where the bloodline of preachers come from. Here's a true story. He came, proposed to her father three times almost, and brought whole uh, pigs. This was the dowry. And every time him and his family would come and propose, my great grandfather turned, closed the door, and told them, get out. Come again. Nope. Get out. That's a lot of pigs being killed. So finally, they went and they got married. She said, word, I'm getting married, Dad. My nana's mother died when she was little. So she was raised by an auntie. So when my grandfather proposed, and they went and got married, and they came back and said to the grandfather, we married now, and more pigs, he said, no. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see you. And this went on for a couple months. She miscarried. My mother is the oldest, but she miscarried two, two babies before my mother. So it was taking a toll. So the in-law said, we have to go and apologize to your mother. In the prayer that It'll live a curse because he was very angry. And she went and got married, and she married this family, and he was against. He was against it. And they're a praying family. They are God fearing family. And they said we gotta go. She said, you know, that's a lot of pigs you guys been killing. And they said we don't care. If we gotta 
that kill every last pig in this country for you will do. So they go. And they humble themselves. They follow protocol. And they ask for his forgiveness. Forgive us for quote unquote stealing your daughter. Forgive us for having us marry your daughter. And finally, he broke. When they did that, Nana was able to <coughs> conceive and carry. And as a result, I'm here today. To us in Western society, that's nothing. So, they don't want to receive it, they don't receive it. I can turn my back. If I don't want to speak to them, we cannot speak for 20 years, that's fine. I live my life, you live your own. We in the same family, we see each other, we see each other, we talk, we talk, and we don't, we don't. Oh, so you can't have children, so what? Let's go to the fertility clinic. Let's get it checked. Let's do it that way. Yeah. At times, we shouldn't get so caught up. But see past that, even in the spirit, it's the little things yeah. that we do affect the atmosphere and affect the very destiny of our life. It wasn't until that she went with her in-laws and she, she cried to her father and she apologized herself and the whole extended her in-laws. They apologized to him. Did it break? One act can alter our destiny, the destiny of our children. One word, one action. Live right in our heart before God. Walk this life clean, creating me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. The heart has to be clean always, and the spirit has to be renewed always. Last verse, 22. You know why I brought that story up about my mama. <laughs> Which I told you all the time. Verse 22. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take the bones with them when they left. Okay, verse 21. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. If my grandmother's in-laws did not go and ask Grandpa for forgiveness and apology, I wouldn't be alive standing before you today. The blessing. Self-righteous living is all about blessings, not curses. Not on us individually, but it affects our bloodline. We, as children of God, walk a very fine line between humility and pride. Kick pride all the way to the curb. You better curb, serve pride. all about humility and embracing it and walking in the blessing. You guys hear what I'm saying? Righteous living, number the ruby for verse 22, always sees and speaks into the prophetic. by faith that Joseph when he was about to die said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt he even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left righteous living always sees and speaks to the prophetic the future for the descendants always involves change and mobility 
and a piece of the past. A piece of history to remind and accompany them of where they came from and God's promise to them. Shall I repeat that again? Righteous living always sees and speaks into the prophetic. The future. The prophetic is the future. Your future. The future of your grandchildren. The future of your great, great, great grandchildren. The future of your descendants and the seed that will come after you. It says that your descendants will always involve in change, mobility, and a piece of past, of their past, a piece of their history to remind them and accompany them of where they came from and God's promise to you. Just because we become righteous in Christ and we live righteously for him, with him, about him all the days of our life, even when he comes back, does not mean that we abandon our past or we forget the history of where we came from, of how we used to be, Amen. of the ancestors that came before us, and the platform that they stood on, what they had to go through and fight, not physically but spiritually, so that you and I could be saved yes, yes. to have a relationship and encounter with Christ. Yes. Our ancestors, your great grandfathers and mothers and mine, have paid a price for our future today. They received Jesus. They believed him to be the son of God. They stood on his word and his promise. If I never get to see my great grandchild being as crazy as she is, preach and prophesy. One thing I know, she don't serve you, God. She will serve you because I set the tone from yesterday. I set the tone from Arkansas. I set the tone from Tennessee and Louisiana. I set the tone from Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa. I set the tone from the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th century. I set the tone for the future of my descendants that they will not remain still in you. They will always be mobile for you, Jesus. They will always be on the move for you. Yes, I started in Africa. Yes. And my seed has populated in America. Yes, I came out of Polynesia. Now my seed is in the Americas. So what? My seed is developing. My seed is growing. My seed will continue to go forth, God. We never know. Your grandchildren today, God will have a call for them and send them to China. Yes. Look at the journey of your bloodline. From Africa to America to Tennessee to L.A. And here you are in L.A. Your, here come your grandson or your granddaughter. And they get assigned to China. Look at the journey. Look at the journey of the nation of Israel. They start out of Egypt. And they push and press their way to Canaan. And out of Canaan, the journey that they went through, out of their rebellion, exile in Babylon, so on and so forth. And here comes Jesus out of Bethlehem. And out of Bethlehem, what was birthed out of Bethlehem? The first church in Acts. To the end of the earth, Jesus said. And to the end of the earth, look at you and I today. Yes. America, Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, Oceania, where I come from. The end of the earth. Look at the journey which started out in the Middle East. And look where it's at today. God's word, his power and presence has overridden the whole earth. Your ancestry, look at where they started and look how far it's brought them to 
said, you and I, righteous living, righteous living. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Father, thank you. A journey is not the people. Our forefathers paid Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even our own bloodline, so that we could bear and partake of the fruit. Rabashidiara, the seed that they sow, we are here to reap that harvest. Teach us, Lord. Shape us and mold us. Let us not take this journey for granted. Let us not take it lightly, God. Roboshaka, that our lifestyle, a kamiyara boko, as righteous vessels. Oh, God. Shaka would be worthy even unto thee. I have this basket here of red stones. The Holy Spirit had impressed on me as I said in the last class. He said, you bring the stones and let these red stones and these Basha represent righteous living movies to you. I just invite you, just come. Come and take as many as you want. But when you take them, hear me. Let them remind you that every time you see these stones, please do not discard them. Do not throw them on the floor. Put them in a sacred, safe that every time you see these red stones, it would remind you of God's righteous living ruby, wisdom nuggets on how you should live your life today. Let these red stones remind you and take you to Hebrews chapter 11. Let it be the guiding post to how you should live your life. Ooh. Let the forefathers of the faith be your example. Oh God, I give you glory. And I give you praise. Come. Just worship God. Thank you, Jesus.
come up and give your offering, I just want you to stand. We're all going to come together and stand in a circle and pray, okay? Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody got special prayer requests?
Lord, encourage him, feel him in his faith, Lord. Ha, ha, let him know. 
Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? We got five minutes and close out three o'clock. Call this a day. Thank you. Did I just just before I close out with prayer? Um, did you did you personally did you learn anything as far?